Hi guys, something I hope to do more of in future is reviewing guitars that are new to the UK market. But I am aware of my own kind of shortcomings when it comes to the build and luthiery. My area really is the notes, the intonation, the tone, the feel, the tuning. And so, because really I don't know a ton about it, I brought in my friend Paul. Hello. Me and Paul have been playing together for around 10 years now. He plays guitar on my upcoming album. That was him on the Ebo on my recent video of Don't Look Back in Anger, re-recorded at Rockfield. But more importantly, this guy gets more guitars to a factor of 10 than anyone else I've ever known in my entire life. He's a guitar nerd extraordinaire, so I thought it made sense to bring him in to help me properly review guitars as we go forward. Hi, I'm Paul. It's great to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me, James. Uh, as James said, um, I'm a bit of a guitar nerd and a guitar geek. Been buying and selling guitar gear for probably the last 30 years now. Delighted that James has invited me here to review these guitars. So, these are the two guitars we're going to be reviewing today. They're both made by Turner Guitars, who are based in Sheffield, and later on we're going to be talking to Nye, the new owner. Turner Guitars was founded in 2002 by Terry Pack, a Blackpool-based manufacturer of high-spec, top-quality guitars. Turner was set up to be the slightly cheaper branch of the business. Good guitars without breaking the bank. Nye took over the business in 2022, but the guitars are still made using Terry's designs. So, we've got the cheapest Turner guitar here, which is a CLS-1E. Comes in at £319 at the time of filming. And this bad boy is one of the most expensive. This is an 82CE, which costs £799. Me and Paul are going to demo these for you and try and give an honest review. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> Okay, so for me the sign of a brilliant made guitar is that it holds its tuning up and down the neck. Wherever you go on the fretboard you need to be confident that the notes are going to ring out, that they're going to ring true, but they'll also ring in tune as well. So both of these guitars have been set up by Guitar Tech before they came in, so tuning and intonation should all be pretty good. Alright dude, do you want to see what the intonation is like on the cheapy, the CLS? Yeah, so I think Again, one of the signs of a good guitar is when you're playing here in the lower register. If it's out, that'll always be a little bit sharp. Yeah. Um, and I think when you're doing your Ds and your As, you just want that to kind of come in in perfect tune and actually... You can pick out every note in there. Try and wait the same thing. Yeah. Wait up there. Hang on. Yeah, absolutely. Try that on the top as well. Damn close, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Yeah. So, one of the things that always winds me up when I'm working in the studio is that this E is in tune and this one is not. But it's in, isn't it? Yeah. As Paul has already said, both guitars were actually properly set up by a guitar tech before they came to us for review. 
The only adjustment I made was I tightened the truss rod about a half turn on the CLS, that's the cheaper one, to just bring the action down a little closer to where I like it. So testing out the intonation is really about seeing how the guitars perform, seeing what they're capable of and how well they hold their tuning up and down the neck after they've been set up. And both the CLS and the expensive one, the 82, were really well intonated after they've been set up. Sometimes that's not the case on acoustic guitars through little flaws in the design or the bridge placement. But here's the 82 and have a listen. There's that same open D, which is fine. There's bouncing up 12 frets. Absolutely perfect, once again. Here's an open E. And here's that same open E, up 12 frets. No problems at all. Now on the CLS 1E, the built-in tuner is actually really accurate. It says it's called an AS4 t and when I talk to Nye in a little bit, who is the owner, I'm going to ask him for a little bit more information about it. When I tested this against the Guitar Tuner app, which is accurate to one cent, this was very, very close. And that is pretty unusual in my experience for built-in tuners like this. On the 82CE, the built-in tuner is a Fishman, so it's industry standard, it's pretty decent. One criticism, however, is that while the pickup itself is pretty decent, the tuner is not really very precise at all. When I tested it against the Guitar Tuner app, I found that each string had a 5 cent margin of error with this tuner. And what that means in practice is if you're in a studio situation and you're relying on that tuner, you can literally have every string 5 cents too high or too low. And the cumulative effect of that can be that your guitar, no matter how high end, sounds like some kind of, you know, honky tonk banjo. So while the pickup is great, I'm not really sold on the Fishman tuner. But this guitar is actually absolutely lovely. Once you get it in tune with a very precise tuner, it sounds beautiful. While the CLS is probably more really a really good starter guitar for somebody who's primarily a rhythm guitarist, someone who's moving into more of a blended rhythm and lead style acoustic would do much better with the 82. I've played them both for a day or two now, just getting to grips with them. And to me, this one's got a really nice kind of scooped bass and bright sound. Whereas that one, it's got this really raw, bluesy, almost boxy tone to it. I can imagine, you know, sitting on the back porch yeah, on a yeah, yeah. wooden rocking chair with a shotgun over me and yeah. playing that one, you know, yeah. shooting squirrels. Yeah. And then this one's perhaps a bit more preparing for its first grouse shoot out on the Yorkshire yeah. Moors with yeah. the gentleman, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can almost imagine this is the kind of thing that Robert Johnson would probably have played yeah. on there uh, when he was starting out. It um, looks, I mean, obviously, again, it's not my area, but it's a similar shape, isn't it, yeah. to the one he used? Yeah. I guess it, at the end of the day, it's down to personal preference, isn't it, really? I mean, this this feels really balanced and really nice, just sort of sat here on the knee. Um, it feels really good to play as well. Another small potential downside is that neither of them has a scratch plate. So if you're quite a vigorous rhythm guitar player, you might, you know, wear the wood away after a while. My uh, first proper acoustic guitar was a Seagull, a Cedarwood Canadian-made one, and it had no scratch plate, and I played so much that I wore the wood down to a couple of millimetres and ended up having to get it into a custom shop and get a massive both sides black scratch plate to kind of save the bodywork. Yeah, I've had the same problem where I play a tack of mine, um, acoustic guitar from the 90s and they have that lovely satin finish on them without without a pick guard. And 30 years on, yeah, I've got a few holes in there. I think the, the good thing about these guitars as well, they've got a high gloss finish so you will have some protection from your strumming and they, they should they should last last a while. But again, um, pick guards, you can easily retrofit them. You can get, get them for a tenner on eBay, a couple of sticky back plastic on, you can pop one on if you want to protect sticky your investment. Sticky back plastic. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Both guitars also would normally come with Turner branded hard cases, but as it stands, they're actually completely sold out at the moment, so we can't show you those today. Both guitars also have your secondary strap connector. It's kind of here on the, the underside of, is this called the heel of the neck? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Under the heel of the neck, so you don't have to kind of wrap your strap around the, uh, the nut. 
So Paul, what do you think about the looks and the kind of the feel? Yeah, I think really nice high gloss finish of it. Looks very professional. The finishing looks really good as well. Um, really nice. I guess the first thing that I noticed when I put it up is that it feels like a, quite a chunky neck. Like, yeah. Um, wider than I was expecting. And mm. again, I think that's probably because I've been used to Takamine and, and a Gibson acoustic as well. This feels like it, it's got a bit of something to it on both models as well. I love the way this one looks. I feel this one, I mean, for my, this is just total personal preference. It's maybe a bit clunky, but that is maybe just the guitar style, the kind of the folk guitar style. Yeah. I don't love the, the yeah, yeah, I don't like the shiny reflective border thing too much either. Or, or you know, this, this shiny yeah. kind of, I don't know, imitation mother of pearl or whatever it is. But yeah. it is, however, it's a 300 pound guitar. So you're not going to be getting the Loudon for 300 pounds, yeah. but for what it is, for what you're paying for it, it's fantastic. Yeah, and again, that that's personal choice. The binding on there, it's the kind of thing that would, would probably show up well on a on a stage uh, with stage lights and that yeah. kind of thing. It's interesting to look at the the price differences between the two because the price difference on on any guitar will be down to materials and how many hours have been spent building it and how much detail you have to go into it. You can see the tuners on the back of this. They've got some nice gold uh, tuners with black uh, tuning pegs in there that match the black ebony fretboard. Yeah, these, um, these gold machine heads look ace. Yeah. The, the subtle thing in here, which is the, the sort of big difference in, in playability, is the fact that this one has uh, more of a satin neck on the back, whereas this one has a gloss neck on the back that's the same finish as the rest of the guitar. And again, in, in terms of how many hours that takes in the factory, it obviously takes a bit longer to do this satin neck and to, to put the, the craftsmanship into it. And that's the difference that you get, is that this, you can feel as you go up and down the neck, it's much more smoother. And a gloss neck on, a, on an acoustic, if you're in a sort of sweaty stage environment, you can, you've had a couple of beers, it might get a bit sticky. Whereas <laughs> every stage is a sweaty environment. Yeah. Whereas this with a satin back neck, um, it's just really easy to transition between the, uh, the, the chords and that and, and move around eff effortlessly at the back. So that, again, Looking at the two guitars, um, it's probably something that's not overly obvious until you actually sit down and you start playing like, yeah, this feels different on this one. So the other subtle difference here is the fretboard material. So this one here has an ebony fretboard on it, which is represented by a slightly more darker wood. And the one that James has is a rosewood fretboard. <coughs> and ebony is pretty much the, the elite of fretboard material. Um, it's got a lovely, rich, dark um, colour into it, but tone-wise, it adds a little bit more top end to your, to your tone. So, so can I just ask you there, Paul, so this yeah. has got a satin finish on the neck yeah. and an ebony fretboard, yeah, yeah. so that's quite high end. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Ebony is becoming rarer and rarer these days to, to source. They, they're now coming out with these really lovely um, colour variations on them simply because um, there's not very many ebony trees left that have got that completely black um, ebony wood type. There's some really nice patterned streaks in there as you, you peel back the strings you can see there's some lighter tones and shades coming in there so every one of these that you buy will be unique because yeah. it will have its its own ebony ebony signature on it rosewood is a really good tone wood you find them on um, most guitars out there you know, fender uh, gibson prs will all use rosewood so it's it's a great wood the difference is that ebony adds that extra bit of top end presence where you just get a little more snap um, into the tone, whereas rosewood you'll get a warmer, a warmer well, around the tone. And that is exactly the difference between the sound of the bottom end guitar of Turner and the top end guitar yeah. of Turner. They actually don't have any of these on the website either because these are sold out. I'm a massive acoustic guitar fan, but the biggest thing to me is not what they sound like plugged in or mic'd up. It's what they sound like acoustic in the room. And this one here, the CLS, it's a real middly acoustic sound. There's not a lot of low end, there's not a lot of bright, sparkly top end. What you've got is this aggressive, almost punk blues sound. I think both these guitars have got 12s on, so that is going to affect the sound. And obviously the pick you use and where you play 
is also going to affect the sound. And of course, anyone watching this is not in the room with us right now. But let's just do a quick comparison. I'm going to strum an E, and then you do one. So here's the CLS. This is the cheapy that, in reality, sounds quite low middly and raw and bluesy. And this is the 82, the high-end one with all the top spec. I love that one. So now, me and Paul are going to demonstrate both instruments for you. The CLS, which is the cheaper model, and the 82, which is the more expensive model. And we're going to demo them in two different ways so you can hear the sound. Firstly, we're going to record them through a stereo mic setup using SM58s and keeping the EQ completely flat. And we're also going to demo the guitars via the mono line out. And for this, the EQ on the mixer will be completely flat and the EQ on the onboard pickups will also be completely flat on both guitars. The only thing I'm going to add in just to give a little bit of a sense of the, the ambience of the room that we're in is just a little bit of top end from the phone microphone which will be kind of acting as a fairly primitive room mic. Thank you. 
now on to the chat with Nye. So ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Nye Farley, the owner of Turner Guitars. Hello. So Nye, can you tell us where these guitars are designed, assembled and manufactured? Yeah, they were designed essentially in the late 90s and early noughties by Terry Pack, who is based over in Blackpool now. He still has a guitar company, Terry Pack Guitars, makes um, very high-end acoustics and electroacoustics. All our guitars are made in China, that's how we keep the prices so low. And the designs really haven't changed a great deal in their fundamentals since then. We've changed some of the aesthetic features, but um, the fundamentals were that good that they haven't really changed. So, designed in the UK, made in China. That's it, exactly, yeah. One of the points that I kind of picked up on the two guitars, mm -hmm. the tuner in this one is very, very accurate. Very accurate. This just says RS, or is that an AS? AS40. AS40. Yeah. Who makes this? Um, I believe it's Bellcat. Unfortunately, that particular design of preamp, we can't get anymore. We're in the process of switching over. I only took over the company in December, so yes. it's um, a lot of the spec choices were from before my, my time. Whatever one you replace it with, keep that accurate tuner. Keep it that precise, yeah. Definitely. That one, when I put it against the guitar tuner app, mm. you've got about a four or a five cent give. That's also me being uber pedantic because yeah. what a guitar. It sits in the hand, it's got this weight and this confidence to it, and the sound is amazing. Overall, I, that was like a 98%, 98.5% amazing guitar. Oh, fantastic. Um, so <clears throat> the only other thing that I would mention on that as well, the only other thing I didn't like on this one yeah. was the paper inside. <laughs> ah, the labels. That's the only thing. I, I feel like that suits that guitar because that's a 300 pound model. Yeah. I want to show you the greatest insert ever on a vinyl record. So here is Led Zepp 4. It is a green and grey, handwritten piece of elegant mastery. And that guitar is a piece of elegant mastery. It wants something like that. I must say, James, the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the labels as they are currently is one of the very few things that we have had consistently bad feedback on. So I will, I will <laughs> look at changing it. Do you know what I really like? There's brands like Takamine, um, where they've got these really beautiful um, mountain pictures on the labels mm. um, and sort of embossed labels and things like that and it does look classy and it is, yeah. it is on my radar that it's something we need to look yeah. at. So, uh, it, it's such a silly, yeah. pedantic, <laughs> tiny little niggling thing but with a guitar like that you just you just want the cream still on top, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah. no that's fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about construction. I think these mm -hmm. things are really well made. I think we've commented that the finishing is flawless on them as well. And I think one of the things that was a surprise is when you pick it up is that the neck feels really chunky on them. Yeah. It feels like a real handful. Yeah. And I think more electroacoustic guitars now are more tailored towards thinner thinner necks. And this was like, oh, that's quite a surprise. It was, yeah. What was the inspiration for the neck profile on it? One thing that we do is we use a slightly wider than average nut. It's a 45 mil nut as standard. And they're all they're all bone, even on the, the cheaper models. Yeah. Just because you get better sustain that way. I think the thicker necks as well, you know, they contribute to the sustain as well. Partly as well on the entry level models, we're sort of thinking of um, players that are starting out. It's kind of easier, you know, when you're when you're an earlier player, I think not a super chunky neck profile, but something a sort of comfortable modern C is probably better at that point in your career than a, a really slim neck for getting your hands around the, the cowboy quarter and those yeah. kinds of shapes, you know. And I think the difference in the higher end model with the satin back on, on the neck as well, that's just yeah. a, something subtle that the audience maybe wouldn't appreciate, but you yeah. as a player, definitely, oh, that feels nice. Would it be a fair prediction that in like five years time, these are not going to be 799 anymore. <laughs> um, it, it would be a fair prediction, yeah. I will certainly do everything I can to keep the prices low because, you know, that's kind of what we're about. We want to get good instruments into the hands of good players yeah. who might not otherwise have had the opportunity and that's, that's always going to be my ethos with it. Yeah, so what's the difference between the 82 CE here, which is completely sold out, and the 80, of which some models are still available? Yeah, the 80 is um, the same wood combination, but it's a dreadnought. The wood spec and, and the tuners and everything like that are the same. 
Mm. It's just the body shape is, is different. So a really big thing I noticed while kind of road testing these guitars, that one really does have this huge kind of belly, lower mid blues, almost punk blues vibe. Yeah. And when I played this one, it does sound the same, but with refined edges. So the, yeah. deep, the depth and the high twinkles are a bit more of a scoop, but both guitars have that low mid soul, Ooh. if you like. Yeah. Um, is that kind of one of your trademarks? Is that their particular personality? Do you know, it's funny that you say that because when I first found Turner Guitars, which was about, um, about four years ago now, somebody brought me one of these in to my first guitar shop as a part exchange and I picked it up and I played it and I thought, the mids are really tight and punchy and the bass is really nice and full. And then he told me how much it was and I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. And I do find as well, across the range, there's an interesting thing that the sort of lower mids are warm and full and there's this kind of punch that you get, which really suits finger picking. Mm. And I, I think that's, I think that is our kind of signature thing. Yeah. You know, that's always drawn me to the, mm. well, all the turn models. Now that's a really interesting point. The folk guitar, now, Paul said that is a folk guitar design, mm -hmm. and while I heard that tone immediately and thought blues, mm. I bet that guitar sounds fantastic with a bit of folk picking, which I know really? you do. I do. I have been known to. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, my, one of my other endeavours is my YouTube channel, Folk Friend, which does mainly Irish accompaniment, Celtic accompaniment, and occasionally we go off down a little side road and look at some songs or a bit of finger style. So, if you would like to hear Nye playing one of these guitars and doing a bit of folk kind of finger style stuff, the link is in the description. So Nye, if people want to buy one of these guitars, where do they go to find you online? I really am keen to support smaller local dealers. Mm. You can order a Turner guitar directly from our website, but I would say go and see your, your local dealer first. I am a small, a small shop owner as well, you know, and I'm really keen to try and keep small guitar shops alive and, yeah. and doing well. Absolutely. And if you're anywhere near Sheffield, of course, call in to Finale Guitar, which is my shop in Sheffield. We've got pretty much all of the Turner Guitars range in stock at all times, as well as lots of other electrics, acoustics, amps, banjos, all that kind of stuff. So if you would be interested in either of these guitars, you can go to turnerguitars.com to look them up or to your local dealer. And as a viewer of this channel, you can get 10% off by entering in the following discount code. James Hargreaves 10. That's all one word, a capital J, a capital H, and everything else, lowercase. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully me and Paul will be doing more guitar reviews in future. So until then, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Perfect. Oh, that's fantastic. That was brilliant. That was brilliant.